Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome back to Rule of Two Review. So today I'm going to do another one of my pseudo week in review videos. I have two topics that I want to discuss really quickly. Again, I don't usually do an actual week in review with a whole bunch of topics in one video, but whenever I do this kind of format where I have more than one thing that I talk about, everyone really seems to like it and dig it. And it is a lot of fun. It's kind of hard for me to do that. I usually like just the one topic per video format, but you know, when it makes sense to do this, I enjoy it. Everyone else seems to really enjoy it and uh, like these videos. Videos, so I happen to be able to do that today, which is pretty exciting. Now, really quickly before I get started into the first topic, I do want to say a quick huge thank you to the insane amount of new subscribers that I've been gaining over the last probably two or three weeks. I've been gaining subscribers at an alarming rate way faster than I'm typically used to. Um, hitting that 3,000 subscriber mark about a month or so ago was apparently a very big deal. Plus, E3 was such a busy time, and luckily I took the week off and had a lot of opportunities to make videos and do podcasts and discuss E3 with you guys and for you guys, and I just think a lot of people kind of joined in around that time is what it seems, and man, it's awesome. It means so much. Thank you guys. Really happy to see you know hundreds of subscribers in the last few weeks, which again, for me, is an extremely fast pace. Um, I figured it was also a good time for me to mention that I want to do another Q&A. Um, you know, a lot of you guys may know, every once in a while, every five or six months or so, I like to do a Q&A where I let you guys shoot me a bunch of questions either on this video down below in the, uh, in the comments or on Twitter and the Facebook page and, you know, typical stuff like that. If you guys wanted to shoot me some questions, I love to answer them. I give you guys a shout out. Um, I really enjoy those a whole lot. And since there's been all these new people and E3 just happened and there's a lot of shit to talk about, I was like, you know, it's probably a pretty good time to do that. Do another Q&A and see what people have to say. So, um, again, if you're interested, please shoot me a question. You can write it in the comments of this video below. You can find me on Twitter where I'm actually very, very active and ask me there. And I do have the Facebook page, which I'm oh, kind of active on, and you can ask me there. So either place, ask me a question, and sometime in the next two weeks or so, I'll probably have enough to be able to move forward, and I'll make a nice lengthy video for you and give you guys shout-outs and answer all your questions. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get to the actual goods and what we're going to talk about today. The first is the pretty big piece of news that a lot of you guys may know from, I don't know if it was yesterday, I think it was actually today or yesterday. These last few days, apparently, a filing within the patent of the Nintendo NX version of the new Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has apparently revealed that there will very likely be cartridges made of this game, which basically is hinting at the NX being a, a cartridge-based system, that that's going to be the actual media and the games that the system uses is its cartridges. It's not going to be discs like CDs or Blu-rays, DVD discs. And this is a rumor, you know, that had been going around for a while. I think this dates back to probably right before the end of the year, I want to say. Uh, you know, right around December or so 2015, when all of a sudden it was like, hey, there, you know, it's possible that Nintendo NX may actually use cartridges and completely abandoned um, optical media, optical discs. And it was... Uh, Interesting news. You know, a lot of people were kind of uh, sharing their opinions on that, and it was, uh, it, I don't know, it, it, it was it was crazy. I didn't really know what to think about it at the time, so I think that's probably why I didn't end up making a video or discussing it. And the rumor thing with the NX has been so crazy and controversial lately, and there was a period where I was really not into it. Now it's been a while. Everything's kind of subsided. This is a rumor that seems to keep popping back up, so I feel like it's worthy of me discussing a little bit and kind of the pros and cons, because that's what most people are looking at this from is, okay, the Nintendo NX may be the first home console in many years, pretty much since the Nintendo 64, to use cartridges as opposed to discs. What does this mean? Is this good or bad? What are the pros? What are the cons? Um, I do have to say that overall, I think it's weird, but I don't really think it's bad. So I guess that's cool. I think that, you know, there are pros and cons to it, but some of the pros are actually pretty strong. The fact that it's going to, and, it go, and again, I, here's what people are discussing. If it's cartridges, it's not necessarily going to be the big, bulky, plastic, screwed together things like a, like a Nintendo 64 or Genesis or an NES card, stuff like that. You know, probably something more like the smaller, slim cards, like what the 3DS games are. And that all of a sudden becomes a little bit exciting, and, and it feels like a modern way to do that. Because when you think about actual cartridges the way they were in the olden days, it's like, man, that even if it would be cool, it's just... It just has this feeling or this element of being really old and outdated. And it's like, oh, that's just so bulky. And it would be like going from MP3s to 8-track, you know, or something like that. Maybe not that extreme, but something like that. 
And it's like that that just wouldn't make sense. But if we do it in these small little card format kind of games, that's a little bit more exciting. So if it uses cartridges, then, you know, as people have been talking about a lot, I'm probably like the one millionth person you've heard bring this stuff up. Um, the games could load faster. The system could run smoother. Uh, the system would have far less moving parts because it wouldn't need a disk drive to continually read disks and load information from it within the system. Therefore, it would be A, potentially cheaper, and B, would last much longer and have less wear and tear on the, on the machine as it's actually used in reading games. Those are very, very exciting prospects. Um, the other cool thing that people have sort of been bringing up is that if it were to use cartridges and if there's any sort of truth to this rumor or idea that the NX is going to be a console and a handheld, or that Nintendo is simply just making another handheld that's a successor to the 3DS, that it's very possible that these cartridges could now all of a sudden move between the home console version and also the handheld version, whatever this new handheld would be. That is pretty super cool. I can't quite call it revolutionary, like some people have wanted to treat the whole console handheld hybrid sort of thing. It doesn't really feel revolutionary to me, but it does feel like a really interesting, unique step that would give the NX a serious identity um, compared to what the competition is and what the rest of the industry is doing. And I think it could also be a lot of fun. It could be cool to take, you know, the NX version of Breath of the Wild, you know, play it at home, and then it's like, oh, I gotta go somewhere for a couple of days. I'll just pop it in my portable version, and I'll just take it with me while I'm traveling on vacation or taking the bus to work or school or whatever. That is pretty exciting. There are some really cool ideas there. So... You know, I like the fact that there are a lot of pros to the cartridge thing. Um, you know, there are some negatives too, and I think that the biggest one is that it's potentially going to make the cost of the games a little bit higher, and that's because discs, the like the, the, the optical discs that CDs and DVDs and Blu-rays are printed on are insanely cheap. They're like 10 or 15 cents, I think, a piece. So they have become the ideal form of gaming, of games and movies now for a long time because of that, because it doesn't cost a lot to make those. Um, you know, there is money going into the cases and the printing of the, the cover art and stuff, but that's standard across the board. When it comes to just making the actual physical game, something like a cartridge and those plastic pieces, and even if you got to screw it together and you got the chips, you know, the chip of the actual game actually built into it, you know, all of a sudden that's quite a bit more when you look at it on a mass market, you know, making, you know, 5 million copies of a game on disc compared to 5 million copies of a game on a little cartridge, even if the difference is only like a dollar, let's say, that's millions of dollars, that's $5 million difference right there just to produce the physical product. Now, none of this has been confirmed, and I don't really know what the price difference would be. Maybe it would be so minuscule that it wouldn't impact the price, but I feel like it very likely would. So whereas maybe the NX itself might cost less because of less moving parts to read these games, suddenly the individual games may cost more, and maybe the average price is jumping up from 60 bucks to 70 or 80 You know, And that could be an extreme case. I'm just kind of spitballing what could be happening there. But either way, in wrapping this whole thing up, I think it's very interesting. Um, there's an element of me where it's like, I, I'm just so used to the optical disc thing. I kind of just want that to continue because it just feels right now. I feel like we've moved on from cartridges. And I, and I grew up playing Atari 2600, NES, Super NES, Genesis 64. So I've gone from the cartridge days when it was the standard into the new revolution of being able to do CD gaming. I mean, hell, I had a Sega CD, yo. I mean, that's some serious shit. I actually had a Sega CD. And it was like, whoa, it's amazing. It's a CD. It takes 28 minutes to start the game, but it's so cool once it starts. And it was just ridiculous. So, you know, because of that, I just feel like I've already evolved past that, or I've seen gaming evolve past it, I should say. So it would feel like a weird step back, but like I said, there's so many pros, and I think that Nintendo can probably market and spin it in the right way, that I'm, I'm okay with it. I, see, I really don't see too much of a downside other than my own personal thing of, ugh, it feels kind of weird to go backwards to cartridge, dead, to cartridge games, but... Either way, it'll be really interesting to see if this turns into anything. Again, it's just a weird patent, you know, some sort of phrasing within the patent of the Zelda, the NX version of the new Zelda. And, you know, very smart people are reading into it saying, hey, this that's what this could mean. And it seems like there could be some truth to that. But it may not be true. It may not be what it means, and, and who even knows. So we're going to have to wait and see whenever Nintendo finally reveals the NX and what's going on with it before the end of time and before the apocalypse happens. So um, either way, that's what's going on with that. Now, the other topic is quite a bit more controversial. And I wasn't sure... I mean, I waited a couple days here because I didn't really know if I wanted to talk about it. But when I realized I hadn't made a video in a few days, I was going to talk about the NX cartridge thing. It's like, you know... 
I really do need to talk about Mighty Number no. 9. It's something that's interesting enough to me because it was a game I, I really wanted to play for a long time that I should probably discuss, you know, even though I hate always talking about negative news. I guess I shouldn't say always. I, I kind of rarely talk about negative news. But, you know, it does happen, and, and I don't always love to do it, but this is something that I think warrants being discussed. And it's something else I'm sure you all probably already know about. Mighty Number no. 9 is finally released, and man, is it... And is it anything but a disaster? This unfortunate game and its crazy life cycle and its crazy development cycle and all the bad press and the delays and now the final product and the reviews are not very good. Um, the Wii U version has been bricking and, and freezing consoles and has a bunch of issues. And I don't, I don't even know if some of these issues are the same on other consoles. But I know across the board, the game is kind of a disaster. And then there were even... Quotes that were either translated correctly or incorrectly from Inafune when it came out, saying, oh, it's better than nothing, you're lucky you even have it, but some people saying, oh, it's not really what he was saying. Who even knows? And it was just like the worst kind of, even if it was an, even if it was a mistranslation, it was the worst kind of PR moments to have as this game was releasing to bad reviews and broken, you know, reports of bugs and broken game glitches. It was like the worst thing to possibly happen. There's just so much going on with this game. You know, and again, you probably already know, it was delayed so many times, it was crowdfunded like crazy, it was one of the, the first and biggest massive crowdfunding Kickstarter success stories. Not the actual first, but as far as being such a huge success that was such a public deal, Mighty Number no. 9 is like one of the first ones I can think of, you know, going back now these last few years, and it looked cool, like I liked the idea, I liked the early concepts that we saw, and then even as it was getting delayed, we saw a couple videos, and even the shitty trailer that came out a month ago, like yes, the trailer was dumb, but the gameplay in it still looked very cool, so I was like, well, you know, I don't really care if the trailer's dumb, I just think the game still looks fun, and I didn't invest in it, I didn't uh, fund it, or uh, what do they call it when you do that, I don't know, and I, I didn't give any money towards it. Um, I was just like, yeah, you know, I'll just play that game whenever it comes out. And I was excited to play it. I have all consoles, but I still wanted to play it on the Wii U. And um, now that it came out, I feel I kind of worry that it's setting a precedence for Kickstarters and for crowdfunding games, you know, because it's such a big mess. And I feel really bad for the people that have that, that funded this game and we're waiting waiting for it for so long and we're really excited and it's just it's it's not delivering is the reports you know full disclaimer i have not played the game so i don't really know and i think one day i may play it for really cheap when i can buy it for 15 or 20 bucks um i'm curious enough but you know i i just i'm not gonna invest in it right now i'm just too concerned about what's going on and there's too many other things for me to be playing so i'm not i'm not too worried about it but i do feel bad for the people who have been supporting this game and you know, I'm someone who's been on the fence for uh, on the fence for Kickstarter pretty much since it came around and crowdfunding stuff. It's not really interesting to me, and I think it's a little bit weird. And I think it's always in my brain. I think it's always been treading potentially dangerous territory. And the way Mighty Number no. Nine plays out, unfortunately, you guys, for me, just my perspective, not you. You can do whatever you need, but this is, this is how I feel. I feel like my worries have been justified with how Mighty Number no. Nine has played out. Now, I, some other people have brought up um, some other games that were successful Kickstarters that worked out, like uh, Undertale was one. I can't think of any other ones that have already released. But people have brought up some legitimate games that actually, yes, it's true, they were crowdfunded, they released, and they were very good. And that's, that's really great. Um, there's two other games that people have also brought up that have yet to come out that do look great and I'm very excited for. The Bloodstained and Ukulele are two games I absolutely cannot wait to play, and those were crowdfunding games. But again... I'm, I'm, I'm really playing the wait-and-see game with those now to see if they actually come out and deliver on what people want or not. And that's the tricky thing with crowdfunding because once you have a crowdfunded game that makes all this money, I feel like the, the, the standards and the level of demand the people who supported this game are going to have are very, very high. So even if those games come out and they're not disasters like Mighty Number no. 9, even if they're just pretty good games that would otherwise be seen as just okay, people potentially who supported it may say, oh, this isn't what I donated two hundred dollars for man that's not that's not okay this is a ripoff and you know i mean there's just so many angles to come at it from and i just i just never felt comfortable with the idea that a game just wouldn't be made i just hate the fact and this isn't even kickstarter's fault but i just hate the fact that we live in a world where a game that should be made that people obviously want can't just have a publisher back it that it's so hard for someone to just get their product and their idea out there and get it made and just release it something like like a ukulele or a mighty number no. nine should have just been picked up by a publisher and made i mean that's the world that we live in and the fact that there's 
all this worry and concern and we don't really know and there's so much money invested that these risks and these gambles by these publishers are seen as so huge and the potential for loss is so massive that they're like, we're not going to do that. So they have to resort to Kickstarter. And that's and Kickstarter, again, it has this great area where it's like at the same time, this, in the same breath, I have to acknowledge the fact that, wow, a game like a ukulele or Bloodstained or Mighty Number no. 9 might not even be able to be made without Kickstarter. And it's great that the option exists for people to say, I'll pay you now, make this game so I can play it when it's done. And yes, I do acknowledge that that is a good thing. But the risk for something like a Mighty Number no. 9 level catastrophe, or even the games that, by the way, never come out and then people have been completely screwed out of their money, that's another risk. As far as I know, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I've never researched this, but as far as I know, there's no legal obligation for someone to make the product once they've been paid. I think that there is some sort of kind of backlash or recourse that Kickstarter or Indiegogo or something can take and try to take, but I don't really know if you can... I don't think like people like if Mighty Number no. Nine never came out. I don't know if if the people can take Inafune and Deep Sliver, Deep Silver, whatever they're called, his studio to court and say you didn't make this. I gave you fifty dollars and you never made this game. I don't really think that that exists now. And if it does, then I'm just wrong. But I, I feel like like that's not the case. Either way, I think that down the road the crowdfunding thing may figure itself out, and then I'll feel more comfortable with it when they make sure there's a moral there's moral there's a legal obligation. And you know that there's a certain standard that has to be kept and the money's going to go to the right places and just, I don't know, all these things. There's a certain time frame they'll meet. It just feels so risky. I mean, I'm all over the place with this Kickstarter thing, you guys, because of Mighty Number no. 9 and because I just, I've thought about it for so long and I just don't feel comfortable with the idea. And Mighty Number no. 9 is unfortunately hurting it. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up here because I'm, I'm starting to get long in the tooth. Uh, but I just feel really bad for Mighty Number no. 9. I, I feel bad both for the people who supported it and were waiting for it and for Inafune and the developers. And I know that might seem kind of stupid, um, but I, f I do ultimately feel like they wanted to make a good game. And obviously some really stupid, shitty things got in the way of it, of it turning out the way it was supposed to. I'm sure you can probably blame Inafune and his studio for a lot of these problems as well, especially when they got so much more money than they first asked for. But regardless, I don't think anyone actually truly sets out to make a bad game. I think he believes in this project, and I don't know what crazy story happened to destroy this thing and make it release to 5.5 reviews, man, and, and broken versions after so much time, where they had so much time to make this game A, fun, and B, work right, and it still isn't. I don't know what's going on. So... Anyway, I'm going to wrap this whole thing up. This is crazy. Um, I feel bad for Mighty Number no. 9. I feel bad for the people who wanted it. I'm definitely not going to be crowdfunding anything anytime soon. That is for damn sure. i got to see something work out properly. If Ukulele and Bloodstained work out, maybe I'll be thinking about it in the future. But for now, make the game, put it in a store, then I'll go buy it. So that's what's that, you guys. A lot to talk about with Zelda, the NX, the cartridges, Mighty Number no. 9, Kickstarter and crowdfunding. Holy freaking crap. Again, I will remind you I want to do a QA and a in a couple of weeks, so leave your questions for me about any topic. Usually I get mostly gaming stuff, of course, but you can ask me about music or movies or food or whatever. I don't really care, you know, just, just whatever you want. Usually I get a lot of Nintendo and gaming stuff, and that's a lot of fun. So ask me questions. Um, hopefully I'll feature your question on my Q&A once I make it. Leave your thoughts about Nintendo, NX, Zelda on the cartridge thing, and Mighty Number no. 9 and the kickstarting thing below. I really want to hear what you guys have to say about all this stuff. And I'm going to end this video stat. So thanks for tuning in. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, guys, and I'll catch you guys next time on another video.